question for you guys. You guys ever been in school and wonder why you're taking a certain class? Yeah. Like, name one. Mine's math. I see no point in math. <laughs> okay, um, side note. Sam is going to ministry school. He's going to need public speaking, okay? But still, you need that class. Exactly. Was it pointless? No. Okay, somebody else name a subject that you don't think is relevant in your life. Science? That's my favorite subject. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I need to ask my adults. Uh, what class did you take in school that you thought was irrelevant? Like, how does it apply to you? <laughs> So Jeremy thought school was just not for him anyway. <laughs> so, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Home egg is, you need home egg, okay? If you don't know how to cook, you're going to eat macaroni and cheese the rest of your life. Or ramen noodles. <laughs> yes, Carson. <laughs> Jam. Oh, stem. What was that? Okay, okay, so, so we all know that there's a subject in school that we feel like, how does that apply to us, right? So what about the Bible? Do y'all ever feel like, what, how does that apply to my life? Has anybody ever asked that question? I know I have. I ain't gonna, I'm going to be real honest. I know I have. I'm like, okay, how does that apply to my life today? Because I know a lot of us, all of us come in here week in and week out. But if we're honest, there are probably times where you go home and you can't immediately see how what you learned in the Bible that day relates to your life. Why is it even worth knowing what's in the Bible? Can somebody answer that for me? It's hard to think about, right? Because you're like, well, it applies, but why is it worth learning? Has anybody ever asked themselves that question when they got home, though? You learned a lesson, and you go home, you're like, how does that apply to me? Because this person next to me got it, but how does it apply to me? So our truth comes from the gospel of Luke. So I have a question for everyone in here. Adults, I don't need you answering because you might know the answer. Where did Jesus grow up? Who said that? Yes. High five. Yes. Jesus grew up in Nazareth which is a highly Jewish town in the region of, no. Where is Nazareth located? Do you might know? Who said that? High fives, air fives, good job. It's in Galilee. Jesus himself was Jewish, and he went to a synagogue school, and there's a culmination of books. One book is called the Torah, and that's what he learned out of. From an early age, do you know what they would do with the Torah? Read it. Yeah, you read it, but you what? High fives again. Yes, you memorized. You guys are good. Did y'all read my lesson before I taught it? No. You guys are good. Okay, so after Jesus' baptism, this is all in the same book, this whole one book called the Torah, he was led to the desert. Now, I need someone to read for me this scripture. Who wants to read? Carson. Keep going. One more. Can y'all imagine not eating or drinking for 40 straight days? I mean... Even four hours is hard for me. So, I mean, imagine 40. Like, if you do that math, that's a long time. It's a lot. My math whiz. <laughs> it's 40 whole days. <laughs> it's 40 whole days. And during this 40 days, it says that Jesus was led in the... Shh. It says that Jesus was led into the desert by God. Can y'all believe that? That God would lead you in a desert. He led Jesus into a desert. But not just to be put there, but to be tempted by the devil. In this moment of weakness, 
the devil approaches Jesus. I need someone else to read for me. Tyler. How would you guys feel if you were in Jesus' shoes and the devil told you, I know you're powerful. Just turn that stone into bread and eat it. What do you think was going through Jesus' mind at that time? I mean, you got to think he was 40 days, 40 nights without any food or water. Wouldn't you think about giving into temptation at that time because you're so weak? Right? Because your body's weak. You need something. You need something to nourish you and keep you going. But let's see how Jesus responds. Okay. I'm going to get everyone to read this with me together. I think it's going to be on the screen too. All right. Ready? And it says, we're going to read together. One, two, three. Jesus answered, it is written, man not live of bread. There you go. I got, you guys forgive me. I'm like the King, I'm a King James kid. So that's, <laughs> I was thinking about the King James version. <laughs> okay. So, but if it says it's written, where did Jesus get it from? You ever wonder if it's written? He, they memorize, right? So it's also written, as Jesus said, another part of the Bible. And we're going to read it again together. Ready? We're going to read. And it says, one, two, three. He tested you to teach you that man doesn't live only on bread. He also lives on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. In this moment of temptation, Jesus quotes the book of Deuteronomy. Now, that is in the Old Testament. I know a lot of us, including myself, the Old Testament is very long and very hard to understand. But the Old Testament gives way to the New Testament. And that's how Jesus can quote these different scriptures in the Old Testament because the Old Testament is the Torah. The Old Testament is the foundation of our faith. But... We often skip it because it's so hard to read and it's so unrelatable, right? I mean, the first five books are nothing but rules. I'm I'm going through that in school right now. The first five books are nothing but rules. And it can be hard to figure out, okay, how does this apply to me? So I I need someone to read for me. There's like two verses I need somebody to read for me. Who wants to read? Okay, Haley, you can read this time. Keep going. One more. The devil proposes a wager to Jesus. Now, how many of you have ever been tempted before. Does anybody know what that means, really? What does tempted mean? Somebody tell me what that means. Benji? Right. So, let's say your mom bakes some fresh cookies, right? And she says, do not eat these before dinner. Are you not tempted to just sneak and grab one? Right? Or for us adults who are, you know, dieting, you know, that candy bar that we're like, uh, I don't think I need that, but It does sound really good because you got a sweet tooth. Yeah. So the devil tells Jesus, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world in exchange for your loyalty. Somebody tell me how, think think about what Jesus was thinking about that time. Of course, everyone knows he's like, no. But when you're tempted like that, anything sounds good, right? So we're going to read together. It's coming from Luke 4, 8. Ready? Je- on three. One, two, three. Jesus answered, it is written, worship your, go- your God. He is the only one you should serve. Again, where does Jesus get that from? Right. Because, again, they memorized when they were kids. Because if you have the word hidden in your heart and you have verses that you know, you can use them for certain situations such as these. So where did he get it from? We're going to read again together. Ready? Um, Deuteronomy. Okay. And we're going to read together. Ready? One, two, three. Worship the Lord your God. 
He is the only one you should serve. Do you all not see how that comes together? Because, yes, it was written in the Old Testament, but the Old Testament can apply to new situations, right? All right, so I need someone, to, someone else to read for me. I'm going to volunteer somebody. Aspen, will you read for me? Okay, and we're going to read this verse together. Ready? On three. One, two, three. Jesus answered, Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. Again, where do we get it from? Look at you. All right, and we're going to read one more time together. Ready? On three. One, two, three. Do not. There you go. I did the wrong one. That was my fault. You guys are good. Okay. <laughs> I lost my place. So what is, what is Massa? Massa. The word Massa, what is that? <laughs> Do, tsh, no, no, no. Funny, but no. <laughs> this is where, where Israel tried to push the hand of God to prove himself good. Basically, what this is saying is they're trying to test God to see if he's real. You, has anybody ever kind of pushed the limits with anything in life? Like, you kind of test it. Like, if someone tells you, hey, that chair is broken, but you're like, oh, it looks perfectly fine. You test it anyway, and it's broken. So, you, you, you know, you fall and hurt yourself. Or they tell you, or you, um, at school, they'll put a sign up on a door that says, do not open, or wet paint. And you're like, it don't look wet, but then you touch it, and what you got, paint on your hands, right? It's the same thing. It's the people in Israel were trying to test God to see if he was good, to see if he would do what he said. Or in this case, the devil tried to tempt God and test him to see if he was, you know, stand firm on his word. So Jesus' simple response to the devil's temptations was to quote scripture. And still, when you read the Bible, do you ever wonder, will I ever use this? But the Bible, although it doesn't speak directly to you, it can speak directly to a situation. You can use scripture to talk encouragement over yourself, to remind yourself the goodness of God, to remind you that he's faithful, he is true, he is just, and he'll forgive anything. God knows that we have unbelief. He knows everything. He knows we have unbelief. But when you pray the prayer, God, help me with my unbelief. He will come rescue you. So, <clears throat> but what if each of these stories, each of these verses, all the time you are spending God's word is shaping the way you see God's world so that you can live better in it? Do y'all believe that? Like, every time you read, you're getting taught something. It may not feel like it. It may not sound like it. But you're getting taught something, right? You're learning how to live this Christian life all the time when you read the Bible. What if all the knowledge you are learning is growing your mind and heart? You ever thought about that? Has anybody ever thought about that reading the Bible? Like, <clears throat> how is this shaping me? It's shaping your way of thinking, your way of loving, because God is love, right? So when you read his word, you're learning how to love like he did. So I have a question for you guys. I want you to think about this as you go into worship and in a small group, how do you know what's wise? How do you know? Think about it. How do you know what is wise? All right, I'm going to pray. And then Will, in his, all his awesomeness, is going to lead us in worship. And I just want you to think about what is really wise. Father, I thank you for this time in your word to learn more of you, to learn more about you. Help us to open our ears, open our eyes, and Lord, open the eyes of our hearts to accept your word and know that it applies to every situation in life. Lord, we love you. We thank you for Jesus, and it's in his name we pray all these things. Amen.